In today's world, the word obedience, it's not a very popular one. None of us really wants to be obedient. <laughs> we want to do our own thing. As I mentioned last week in our homily, the great quote from St. Augustine that all sin is a turning into self. And of course, if all sin is turning into self, then all holiness and happiness will be a turning away from self, accepting God's plan for us and his will for us and the teachings that he gives to us to guide us always. We heard today from St. Paul's reading that Christ humbled himself, becoming obedient even to the point of death. Last week we heard these letters, words from the letter to the Hebrews. Son, though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of salvation for all who obey him. So today in our Passion account, we see that perfect obedience of Christ. He's fully aware of the horror that he is about to experience. In his humanity, he would prefer not to undergo this suffering, but his entire being is united to accomplishing the Father's will. And so he says in an intense plea, Father, take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. I kind of spent some time reflecting on these words this week, and the more I did so, the more I saw how our communion with Christ here in the Eucharist in our life of the church is meant so that we may say and pray these same words with him. All of us suffer greatly in all those extraordinary tragedies that we will experience in this life, but also in the normal day-to-day -day sufferings that will be ours. We're meant to be united more and more each day with Christ. And so we're meant to pray these words. Father, let this difficulty pass or this illness or suffering go away. Father, change this situation or this circumstance in my life that is causing so much pain and sadness. And it's good that we do this and pray for that healing, that restoration. And sometimes God will grant that for us. But do we pray? with the same intensity, that second part of that prayer of our Lord. But not what I will, but what you will. And I'm not sure we do, and I think that shows this dynamic that's constantly going on in all of our lives between our desire to do good, to follow the Lord's will, and our weakness and our sin. It's symbolized by the contrast between the two Gospels we heard today, the Passion that we just heard from, and the Gospel that began our Mass. In that first Gospel, the people hail him as the King, and we do that, many of us, so wonderfully in the, in the lives that we live, in our faith that we live out. God gives us a great joy and peace then. That's a great blessing and consolation that is ours. But then, sadly, you and I are sometimes like the crowd calling out, crucify him, and are turning away from him, maybe denying him like St. Peter, maybe inattentive like those disciples that fall asleep while he prays in the Garden of Gethsemane. In our second reading, St. Peter implores us to keep this event of the Lord's passion and death always before our eyes. Lent as a whole tries to do this for us. And Holy Week, particularly as we come here on Palm Sunday and read this passion leading us to Holy Thursday and Good Friday, are meant to do it in an even stronger way. For if you and I do not keep our focus there on Christ, on his infinite love for us and the infinite mercy that he offers to us in his suffering and in his death, on the example of his obedience to his heavenly father that he shows to us, then sadly and tragically, our focus will fall back on ourselves, on what we want, on what we think we need, or what we want to do. 
Father, take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. This is the prayer of the Son of God, our Savior and Lord, as he's about to undergo his passion to offer us eternal life in him. May it be our prayer too, so this communion that we celebrate here sacramentally may strengthen us to grow more and more each day in our obedience to God, to embrace his will in all of its manifestations, even in those sufferings that will be ours and the death that awaits us. So that one day through those experiences and in that communion, we will then be joined with him forever in the glory of his resurrection.